Hello, I'm the Commander Xander. I remember it so that a stage critic doesn't have to. And neither should you. And it's time for another installment of... Reviewing Nostalgic Nostalgic Critic Reviews! Although I don't know how nostalgic this one is since this came out like almost two months ago. But! Seeing as how Batman vs Superman was the rave over spring break, I figured that it's time to delve into the Nostalgic Critics Review since we've had some time to let the fans digest it. As you probably remember, or may not remember, the Nostalgic Critic did a crossover with Angry Joe in regards to Batman vs Superman and they thought it was meh at best. Well, screw them! I thought this was one of the best Batman movies I fucking saw. And I have a witness to prove it. Isn't that right, really? Oh, yes, I'm a man. Because I did the review of that movie, I'm a man. And I thought it was the greatest movie I've ever seen in my whole life. I'm being serious. Feel free to watch my video on YouTube, I'm a man. So with that, I figure I'd rip into the Nostalgia Critic. And I guess Angry Joe for that matter. For... Claiming that this was not better than meh. So with that, let's delve into the Nostalgia Critics review of Batman vs. Superman. We begin this review with, of course, the Bat Signal. Hey, look at that, Angry Joe finally got a sign in the sky. Because if you remember the crossover that he did for Digimon the Movie, which he didn't do with Angry Joe, he had a sign that said J-O. And Angry Joe thought that was for him, even though his name is spelled J-O-E. So he finally gets a signal. And conveniently looks just like the Superman one, since he does happen to like Superman, and the nostalgia critic happens to like Batman. Which makes sense that these two would do a crossover at that point. As he looks into the sky, which is clearly a green screen, because there's no way in hell it'd be raining like that, or else he'd be, like, drenched by now. Flying out of the sky comes Angry Joe, and my golly, has he gained fucking weight. You know, it occurs to me that the Nostalgia Critic is the only one that really hasn't gained a lot of weight over the last few years. Epic steering contest, go! You ready? Yeah. Let's do this. And just when you think something epic's gonna happen, they go to Zack Snyder's office. This is the new guy. You might refer to him from the awesome comic show that unveils every Monday on YouTube on the Channel Awesome website. Yeah, he's involved in this one too. So I guess you could say it's a tri-crossover, if you know what I mean. Three different people with their own unique shows on Channel Awesome converging into the Nostalgia Critics Review. By the way, he did a pretty good Zack Snyder from what I saw. Um... They're not too thrilled, and this transitions into the Nostalgia Critics intro, which you probably have seen a bazillion times, and we're not going to waste our time on this. So after the, as usual, epic Nostalgia Critic intro, we've got two angry critics and a fake Zack Snyder talking about this movie. So DC, oh by the way, just a uh, spoiler here, and this is not a spoiler alert, but just a heads up, you will not see any clips from the movie, instead they're reenacting all those clips, because, well, it's a clipless review, yeah, someone for the Nostalgia Critics bowed, remember from Review Must Go On when he said he wouldn't do anything currently in theaters? This technically was in theaters when the review came out, so hence a clipless review. In fact, he's been doing it for like the last few years because, well, let's just say YouTube hasn't been so kind to him lately. Just like YouTube hasn't been kind to any reviewer lately. Yeah, real mature move, YouTube. But you'll see photos from the movie like, hello, Wonder Woman. Dropped a shocking 68% the following Yes, they recap the epic drop despite the amazing jump. Second weekend had a 63% drop. Wow. That means that 
Wait a minute. You're telling me that Batman vs. Superman had a bigger drop the second week than the worst Batman movie of all time? Okay, that doesn't change the fact that Batman and Robin is still the worst Batman movie ever. Big business associate. Aliens! As a nostalgia critic delves into the clipless review that clearly shows what actually happened in the movie, and I can be witness to it because I did see this movie in person. Alright! Naked Chairman Chambers! Every man's dream is fulfilled. Yeah, Zach, what is that about? Yeah, really about Naked Terror Chambers. I don't think I should have to explain the obvious. Besides, this leads to a very deep conversation. I just don't know if the world is ready to accept you, or if what you're doing is right, or if it is right, if it's just going to make things worse. Why is everything so fast-paced? You're standing in the bathtub. Oh, that reminds me. Hey, Playboy, if you're going to rank Naked Terror Chambers on your pendant scale, what would you give it? How dare you? You clearly are specific with your ladies. Which I'm surprised because you like just about every girl in the sea. The shiny green rock that can weaken Kryptonians. I'll let you have it if you give me access to Zod's ship. You seem completely unbalanced. Why would I give you access to any of that? Because I've got Jolly Ranchers. Yes, this is the only thing I didn't like about the movie is the Jolly Rancher part. By the way, Wonder Woman's in this movie. Hello. Oh yeah, and did I mention that the guy from the social network, Jesse Eisenberg, I believe, played freaking Lex Luthor? The Lex Luthor I remember was, well, from the animated series, bold, business-like, not a cockamaniac maniac that's on the verge of being the Joker in Henda Arkham Asylum. That was like the only meh of this movie, in my opinion. Jesse Eisenberg. Four, there's no reason for Luthor to hate Superman here. In the comics and movies, Superman foils his evil plans constantly. So it makes that's why I like Gene Hackman over uh, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. He's a crazy maniac, and Gene Ackman made him look like a professional genius, which is pretty much what he is—a professional genius. Yeah, how did he make this doomsday? You might ask. Let's see, his own blood and. Oh, Lord Zod. The dead Lord Zod. How do those two things combine into that beast? I don't know, whatever. As they continue to explain what Lex Luthor should be and why Jesse Eisenberg isn't anywhere close to it, which I can actually agree with them on. Oh, nice baseball stance. Get it? Because it's baseball season. Superman stance. Trampled on civil liberties 29,385 times. People living in fear of him. Three and a half billion times working with the law. Nada. And the baseball music in the background is very catchy. Like your Superman is powerfully dangerous. Putting tons of people in harm's way. And there's even chance that he's unstable, he must be destroyed. Batman stands. Civilians who think he's powerfully dangerous, 2.7 million. So I guess he wins in that one. People harmed by him, God knows. Psychiatrists who say dressing up as a, as a bat is way past 1% unstable. Ooh, that's a lot. Shall I? I think I will. 9,254,902,764 psychiatrists. Really? We have that many psychiatrists in the world? You're telling me that a 30th of the U.S.'s population 
a 30th is freaking saying that dressing up as a bat is way past 1% stable. Why do we have that many psychiatrists in the first place? Shouldn't we have like, oh, I don't know, less than that perhaps? Oh, by the way, they don't get the whole fucking number in there. By the way, Wonder Woman's in this movie. Hello. Howdy, boys. God, I love bringing people together. And what's up with Wonder Woman casually walking by like that? Which, by the way, Tamara Chambers looks freaking hot in that Wonder Woman outfit, don't you think? Let's ask. Oh. Ooh. So I guess they bugged them. See you later, boys. Are you seeing a pan in here, folks? It's like they're assuming that Lex Luthor is turning into the Joker. That's their plan here. Or maybe the Mad Hatter. Because it kind of looks like the Mad Hatter from the Alice in Wonderland movie. P.S. There's a sequel coming up. Alright, let's give a hand because... Hey, look! Batman vs. Superman! What the hell kind of a question is that? We're cool, we're cool. Yeah, that's what I thought. Listen, detective, if I'm so bloodthirsty as you say I am, why haven't I killed you already? Because I intimidate you. Not really, because it's Superman. If you had that kryptonite, though, that'd be a different story. You never answered me. Do you bleed? You will. What did you say? Nothing. Watch what he does to the Batmobile. Actually, that's clever, because now you really can't go anywhere without the Batmobile. Your next line of gadgets! So this transitions into the commercial break, and then after the commercial break, and you probably saw an ad on YouTube if you don't have the ad block, we then cut back to an angry nostalgia critic and angry Joe. Who's already angry because of his name. You should know because, well, you've got two angry critics here whom I disagree with on this movie that are wanting to rip on you, fake Zack Snyder. Wait, why is Rob Zod? I thought Dunk was always Zod. I wanted to say Dunk Walker is Zod. Why is Rob Zod? I wanted him to say. Too bad we'll never get to see it. Curse you, Rob Walker! Actually, don't curse you. you you're pretty decent. So the nostalgia critic is pretty much getting his way through, you know, his phone. And hey, Kevin Costner! Oh, wonderful transition. Oh, don't worry, this happens all the time. I brought my own chloroform. <sighs> but she wakes up on top of Lex's building. <gasps> Hello, my dear. Uh -huh. I knew it. Through my journalistic skills, I figured out it was you, thus completing my incredibly essential role to this film. Oh, you figured out that Lex Luthor was the bad guy, huh? Real brain scratcher there. Nobody else would have figured that one out. You really solidified yourself. I think he's starting to turn into the Riddler more than the Joker, in my opinion. Seriously, why is the Joker redhead again? Two kidnappings to take place on the night that he was planning to finish him up. See, see, there you go. And you know what the best part is? I did all of that off screen. So even I don't know how I did all this impossible shit. Which proves that you're a complete lunatic. Hey, I'm really important. Oh, yeah, sure. Conveniently puts on a purple jacket. He's turning into the Joker. What's next? White tie-dye on his face? I really am important. It's over, Luther. Your mama says black. Says black? No, but she will when I slit her throat. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh,
What the hell? Good lord! <laughs> now go kill Batman because I think it'd be cool. Okay. Really? Because Batman has a motivation to kill Superman. Now Superman has a motivation to kill Batman, even though he doesn't want to kill Batman. And thus the epic fight! Can we get to the epic fight? Look, I'm here to see the epic fight. I'm sure there's a bunch of people who have not seen this movie that are seeing this review wants to see the epic fight. So where's the epic fight here? Like that, maybe? One is dark and aggressive, the other is kind and hopeful. Seeing two points of view that are different, but we identify with, go ahead and head Alright, so after that, we skip on, they eventually team up, and guess what? Oh, great, Rob. Hello, Wonder Tamra. Don't you watch these movies? We don't save people from destruction, we bring it to them. Then Superman has a great idea. I'm gonna sacrifice myself to save us all. Are you sure? Yes, even though there's probably a thousand other ways we could be doing this right now, but no, I'm gonna sacrifice myself. No, I'm With the Kratodian spear that nearly killed him. Yeah, but I got over it. We seem to do that a lot. And that's the epic conclusion. Wait, why is Rob Doomsday? He looks nothing like Doomsday. Dies. Superman dies in the second movie. Well, don't I love the nostalgic critic's reaction. You'll lo you'll love this. Because clearly Angry Joe's gonna go nuts. Actually, you're not even the Joker, much less Lex Luthor. You're the fucking real Lurks that you can't riddle stuff. Oh, believe me, he will come back. And there will be a Justice League movie out of this. Watch the reactions. This turns the is like, okay, Angry Joe, since this is your thing, I'm just gonna sit around like a badass. I'm not even gonna go ranting like I usually do. I'll let you do all that since you are angrier than me. Well, he does that. Yeah, epic. You know what I want to see? No? I want to see the Justice League at his funeral, but now I can't. I want to see a hero slowly stripped of his life in the ultimate battle. Instead of just being stabbed in one swoop, but now I can't. But you, you, you know he could come back, and they might actually do this. He built a connection with me in hundreds of stories, but now I can. But you can. That this might be the time that Superman doesn't make it back, but now. Yeah, angry just saying this will never happen. This will never happen. This will never happen. And after his rant, what is the nostalgic critic have to say? Ditto. Oh yeah, and then he gives his opinion on it, which is probably the same as Angry Joe's. And then we cut to the ending, and this is what they want. And what does Zack Snyder do? Beats the crap out of him. He deserves to beat the crap out of you. That's all you did? That's all you did? You found it decent and you just want to write the next one. And Zack Snyder had to go through... How long was this? Uh, 20 minutes of this just to freaking have them say in the end, can we write the next one? Well, certainly you can write the next one. In hell! Because I actually thought this was the best movie I ever saw. I can't believe those two thought this was decent. Come on. It's Batman versus freaking Superman. It's what everyone's been waiting to see. Now, I will admit, this, is, this might not be the best Batman movie, but it is one of the best Batman movies ever. 
along with Mask of the Phantasm and the 1989 Batman, as well as all the Christopher Nolan trilogies. This one is up there, in my opinion. But they thought it was decent. No, 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 no. You got it all wrong. This is just a setup for the Justice League because they're trying to compete with Marvel. You want to know why? Because Marvel's already a step ahead of them with the Avengers. What does DC have to offer? Just Batman and Superman movies, though mostly Batman. Now you have a chance to form the Justice League. And those two thought that this movie was decent? They clearly don't know what Zack Snyder has in store for him. This is just a setup for the Justice League. At least that's my true sense on it. In all honesty, you know, I think this is a really good movie. And if you haven't gotten a chance for it, and prefer not to watch the review until after you see it, then definitely check it out, because Batman vs. Superman is awesome. I'm the Commander Xander, and I remember this because I'm Batman! Wait a minute, I'm not in with Batman. Nope, I'm Batman. And I remember it so that it's not the great thing to do, and neither should you!